Hey everyone, so uh, this is just gonna be a really quick video. Uh, for context, I got back from my vacation in Japan. I am currently sick, hopefully not with Japanese encephalitis because uh, that's one of the diseases where you develop re mental retardation. Uh, it's actually a real thing. Uh, seizures, encephal, uh, your brain gets swollen and then you die. It's no cure. I probably don't have that. Probably just a simple cold, but fingers crossed guys. Um, so everything is, uh, I'm working really hard on clock. Uh, there's a few things to change. I got even more clock feedback. Um, so clock's coming along. Uh, other stuff's coming along. I'm doing catch up now because I literally just got back into the States last night. Uh, so this video is gonna be a, an intelligent video. Uh, I haven't done one of these in years, it feels like. We're gonna talk about chemistry and how I dye cubes. This is completely different from how I dyed cubes back in 2016. This is more like I did a cube for Blake and I think uh, I gave one to Puzzle Cuber, Kelly. Um, and Blake showed me this cube after he used it like for thousands of solves and the color was still on and the quality was still very good. Uh, I'm, I have zero, probably like negative three uh, plans to make this a commercial product. So I'm gonna teach you some uh, not so basic chemistry and how to do this. Uh, this is not a guide for kids and I'm gonna explain why. This is a guide for adults and people with ad uh, adult supervision and access to chemicals that can cause harm. And that's why you shouldn't do this. This is just an exposition and if you wanna learn some chemistry. So first off, the dye. I like to use uh, these cheap Chinese dyes. They're uh, for plastic. Uh, just, they come in these little things and they're, they're really cheap. Uh, but we have no idea what's actually in them. It's a black box. Without detailed things like GC, NMR, or maybe AA, without things to understand the structure and without some guesses and hints and tests, we have no idea. But with chemistry, we can have a general idea. So dyes that go into plastic or organic dyes in general in the modern world typically have a bunch of rings to them. And this is because when you have a lot of rings and the electrons moving in the rings, they can catch certain wavelengths and they only tend to reflect certain wavelengths. This is the property of certain dyes with a lot of rings and nitrogens because those tune this wavelength to a certain part where uh, you get the color that you want. So uh, you got a lot of bodipes, uh, cyanines, uh, something, uh, mauvines, they all have the basic concept of take one wavelength of light in, reflect certain wavelengths and absorb them into the electrons so the electrons uh, get gain some energy and distribute it throughout the ring. Um, so we know for a fact that the dye is a ring structure with a lot of carbons with intermediate molecular weight. Now we have to think, what is a solvent that can take that big ring structure and put that ring into plastic? We know plastic is some ratio of ABS. Uh, doesn't really matter. Now we have to narrow down the field. A lot of solvents will just straight up melt or destroy or completely harm the plastic. I have uh, about 15 solvents here and I'm gonna tell you which solvents worked well for me. We're just gonna remove most of the strong solvents off the list. I see people online using uh, uh, ethyl acetate, methyl acetate, uh, acetone, the basic ones. No, you, it's, it's gonna dissolve the plastic and the plastic, it's not gonna have that nice sheen and any touching that you do to the plastic in, in between the dyeing process, it's gonna damage the surface finish later. You need a solvent that is very powerful, but is slow to dissolve the plastic. And when you go into solvents, you have to think, do we need a protic solvent, a protic? Mm, viscosity, does, do those things matter? Uh, sort of. So in chemistry, if you're working in a lab, one of your go-to solvents to dissolve almost anything to run an NMR sample is 
dimethyl sulfoxide, DIMSO. Uh, this is dirty because I use it. DIMSO has a lot of strange yet interesting properties. Uh, if you are exposed to enough of it, you can taste garlic on your breath. That's from the sulfoxides. It is toxic to dogs and it is used in horse medicine and some human medicines actually. And that's because by itself, DIMSO by itself, if in a pure form, it won't cause you much harm. The property of DIMSO is it's so powerful as a solvent, it can actually permeate membranes. So for skin, it'll go right through your skin. And once it's in your body, your body can actually metabolize it. And that's why it's used in medicine and distributing medicines. And some people use it for pain relief. The trouble is if you mix DIMSO with bad things, it will take the bad things and shoot them right through the membranes of your skin into your body. And that's why I can't recommend this to anyone who doesn't have supervision. So glasses on and gloves. These gloves are a no-no. Nitrile and latex gloves, DIMSO can actually penetrate through. If you, even if you triple and double and triple glove, DIMSO is a powerful enough solvent that it can go through the gloves. You're gonna need a butyl or isonitrile gloves as a minimum. And with these gloves, you can work safely with it. So I'm put on my gloves backwards, forwards this time. Um, and now I'm safe to go. But DIMSO in itself, although it is strong towards plastic, it takes a while to get through the plastic and it readily dissolves the dye. You're gonna need something more, something more powerful and slightly faster. <coughs> I'm really sick, guys. That's where this comes in, N-methyl pyrrolidone. If you mix those in a 50-50 ratio, the N-methyl pyrrolidone will sensitize the top layer of the plastic without dissolving it. Like if you dropped a cube into NMP, it would actually soak up the NMP before it would, the cube would start breaking apart. NMP is used in a uh, aircraft paint stripper, certain paint stripper and uh, I think petroleum industry. They don't like it because it is toxic to wildlife. And like I said, this is not a guide for kids. This is just an exposition. And if you wanna learn some chemistry, um, this guide is only for people who know what they're doing and are really careful around chemi chemicals. So if you mix those two in a 50-50 ratio and the best way is to expose the plastic, I'm gonna see the dye this to show you what, what it's gonna be like. Um, but if you, Mix those two with your dye. I have here purple dye currently. And then you put the cube piece in, it will hold the dye. Uh, you'll notice if you watched my old Instagram video of me just demonstrating this, I did not wear gloves. That was really bad. But if you're gonna do this and you have these chemicals, you should wear gloves and do it. So you just drop it in. And it doesn't take long at all. Just a few seconds, you shake off the excess and Ideally, you might be tempted to wash this off. You can wash this off with water, but the best thing to do is just to let this sit in some glycerin or silicone, and uh, that will let it penetrate in. Because these solvents are so strong, they'll carry the dye into the surface of the plastic, and it'll be fine. Um, I have silicone, I have glycerin, but just for the purposes of the video, I'm gonna spray this with water. Sometimes if you hit it with water, you might get a white finish on top. That's because the solvent is leaching things out. If you let the solvent just do its thing slowly with silicone, uh, it'll be good. Um, so let me just wash this off. I'll be right back. All right, so I've washed it off with this and you can see uh, there was an air bubble, but uh, if you do this repeatedly, it'll, keep, it'll catch the dye. Uh, honestly, you should just leave this in for a little longer, but this as is, it might still be a little soft, but this is what I sent to Blake and it held the color for quite a while. Um, it'll last thousands of solves without scratching off and that is how I dye cubes, by using a strong solvent that doesn't 
completely dissolve the plastic, but is easily absorbed, and it'll absorb in all the dye into the surface of the plastic. And there we go. It, it's a little uneven because I did it quickly. Should have let it soak more and a little air bubble there, but it shows results. Uh, you can check my old inst my Instagram for old posts and things. So next video is probably going to be more clock stuff, uh, maybe some other ex experiments. I am uh, debating writing some software for some fun things, uh, but it's a busy week. I will not be taking Thanksgiving off and we're going to get things out for everyone. So thanks for watching guys. See y'all in the next video.